Turn, if you will, to Genesis chapter 5. We're going to go all the way to the very first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 5. And I want you to see an example or a demonstration of godliness. Genesis 5, look please at verse 21. Genesis 5, 21. Here's the demonstration. It is a godly man named Enoch. You've probably heard of Enoch at some point in time and coming to church and being in Sunday school. But here in chapter 5, we, we find these words, beginning in verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years, and he begat Methuselah. Now, Methuselah is known for one thing in the Bible. He's the oldest person in the Bible. He lived the longest, right? Methuselah. Notice though, verse 22, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Now go to Hebrews chapter 11. We'll go all the way to the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 5 because here we find something else about Enoch. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5. Look at the verse. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he what? What is it? He pleased God. Now, I want you to notice two things about Enoch. Here they are. Write them down. Number one, Enoch walked with God. Right? We learned that from Genesis chapter 5. Enoch walked with God. But number two, Enoch pleased God. Enoch walked with God and Enoch pleased God. Simply put, Enoch was devoted to God. His life was what we would call God-centered his life was not about Enoch, but his life was about God. And so his whole life rotated around God. And so consequently, he was walking in step, living his life in step with God. And the result of it was what? God's stamp of approval upon his life and saying that here is a man who pleased God. Two things that Enoch walked with God. That expression, two things that it implies. Number one, it implies intimacy. Intimacy. Enoch knew God in a personal way. He didn't just know God with his head, but he knew God with his heart. Do you have that kind of an intimate, personal relationship with God? If not, I want you to know that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that you too can have a personal, intimate relationship with God. If you don't have that kind of a relationship with God, I want to remind you of two verses, 1 Timothy 2, verse 5 and verse 6. For there is one God. There's not multiple gods, folks. There's only one God. And one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for what? All. You ought to circle that word all and right off to the side. That includes me. <laughs> we need to understand that Jesus died on the cross for us. He died for you and he died for me so that we might not only have the forgiveness of our sins and the gift of eternal life, but also so that we can have a personal, intimate relationship with the holy God. There's only one way to have a relationship with God, and that is to put your faith, to put your trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Do you have that kind of a relationship with God today? If you would say, preacher, I've never made that decision to, uh, to put my trust in Christ as my personal Savior, then I want to encourage you to make that spiritual decision today. Don't go another week without putting your faith in Christ and Christ alone to save you. You cannot be a godly person without a personal relationship with God. And so 
Enoch walked with God. That certainly implies intimacy. But number two, it implies obedience. Enoch was in step with God. He not only had a relational walk with God, but he also had what we would call a righteous walk with God. He was fully surrendered to the authority of God in his life. And consequently, Enoch consistently walked with God in obedience. Do you remember what the prophet Amos asked? And he asked this question, can two walk together except they be agreed? <laughs> if we're not walking with God, let me just tell you something. The problem's not God, the problem's with us. As we sang today, he's always been faithful. He's always been there for us. You see, the result of Enoch's relational walk and righteous walk was God's stamp of approval upon his life. And God says, you please me. Enoch pleased God with his life. In other words, the result of his devotion to God was a godly life. I'm back to where I started. You cannot live a godly life and not be devoted to God. What are you devoted to today? Are you devoted to your occupation? Are you devoted to making a lot of money? Are you devoted to accumulating all that the world has to offer? What are you devoted to? If you're devoted to God, the result will be godliness. Now I'm back to my original statement. The very essence of the Christian life is to be godly. Isn't that ultimately the best thing that could be said about anybody here today? It's to say, I have a godly mother. I have a godly father. I have a godly wife. I have a godly husband. But what about, I want to leave earth with people understanding and knowing that my sole purpose in life was to please God.